So this week, filmmaker James Fox, director of Moment of Contact and a number of other excellent UFO documentaries, dropped a clip from an interview he did with Stanford professor Gary Nolan, where Gary torches Neil deGrasse Tyson and says he should be stripped of his PhD. We're going to take a look, and I'm going to tell you why I think Neil actually has a point. Stick around. So James Fox is a filmmaker who made a number of excellent documentaries on the UFO UAP topic. And the most recent one that he put out was called Moment of Contact about the Virginia Brazil case. And if you haven't seen that documentary, you should absolutely watch it because it is outstanding. And I really like James's work and I think that he's an excellent filmmaker. Um, so he does a great job of exploring this. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to show you the trailer just so you can get a kind of some atmospherics on who James Fox is and what his work looks like. So let's take a quick look. This is the trailer for Moment of Contact, and that was released in 2022. In 1996, the people of Virginia, Brazil, witnessed a UFO event that would change their lives forever. Peter Coyote does the voiceover for this. Awesome. I'm a big fan. Call it another Roswell, if you will. That is a crashed vehicle that had beings on board. Mas que eles não poderiam admitir a verdade, a população ia entrar em colapso. Nada temos a esconder. Finally, the facts will be revealed. The Virginia case is considered the most well-kept secret in the military circles of Brazil. My objective here is to put some clarity on what took place in Virginia, Brazil, January 1996. The witnesses are some of the most compelling testimony I've ever heard. Meu nome é Carlos de Souza. Meu nome é Cátia Xavier. Meu nome é Liliane Silva. Meu nome é Valkyria Silva. Em 1996, eu vi uma criatura estranha ali. Action! A lot of people in this town have a little piece of the puzzle. Naquele local, eu vi o rastro da criatura o pé. Foi onde ele falou que o que eu vi era uma coisa sobrenatural. This year. Mark Pelicherez, he had captured this creature with his bare hands. Você confirma que o seu irmão estava de serviço naquele dia 20? Confirmo. After he captured the creature, he developed this infection that wouldn't go away. Foi pro CTI de manhã, 7 horas da manhã, 15 para o meio-dia, ele veio a óbito. This can no longer be covered up. They might shoot us because we're on the property. Eu levo a defesa, vamos escutar, This can't be denied. Bater na porta. E aí isso lá para mim. Ficar que se qualquer um que sofrer uma punição muito severa. This was proof. We pull this off. It'll be the most compelling testimony revealed. Of contact. Aqui, ó. Foi aqui. This is a level of confirmation that only a handful of people on this planet have. All right, so that's Moment of Contact. Uh, and James Fox has done outstanding work in this area for years. He's well known in this community. So if you're not familiar with his work, definitely check it out. Um, but he just put out a clip from an interview he did with Stanford professor Gary Nolan, and it's brutal. I don't know the context of this clip and the larger project, but we're going to take just a look at it, and I'm going to let you guys just see what this is because it is, it's harsh. The Neil deGrasse Tysons of the world. Mm -hmm. He is a very public figure. He is considered mainstream scientific community. A lot of people respect and listen to what he says. I don't think he should be respected because I don't think he's acting in the best uh, interests of science. I think he's broken his oath of science and that, you know, frankly, if there were a tribunal of uh, could you take away somebody's PhD, Neil deGrasse Tyson's PhD should be removed. When's the last time he's been invited to give a, a science talk? When's the last experiment he's published? Never. He hasn't. 
Why is anybody listening to him? Don't ask me. He bloviates. Sorry, Neil. Oh, He should snap. be stripped of his PhD. Boom, goes the dynamite. That's a mic drop, if I ever saw one. Um, so Neil deGrasse Tyson has been a thorn in the UFO community side for a long time. And part of the reason for that is because he is saying, I don't think there's a there there. And if there is a there there, we should have some evidence and we should take a look at that evidence and then we can study it and we can figure out what's going on. But without actual evidence, we just have people's testimony to go on and that's just not enough. Um, that has <laughs> sparked kind of a controversy with other whistleblowers in the community and um, David Grush on... Uh, this is uh, Jesse Michael's interview he did a few months back. Take a look at this. This is David Grush challenging Neil deGrasse Tyson to a debate and calling him out. You know, I don't like throwing shade, but like Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Oh, yeah. He's made up his mind. I re I've read his tweets, and I'm like, dude, you have a PhD in physics? Where's your curiosity? I can't even believe. Yeah. There's no evidence that would convince an authentic skeptic. I have credentials, too. Yeah. And I'm happy to go toe to toe with you. Yeah. I, yeah, if he wants to debate me, I'd be oh, no, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, yeah, uh, so th Neil deGrasse Tyson actually responded to that, and uh, here's a clip from Breaking Points. Now, this was this all happened a couple months back. So just to kind of give you some context for what's going on, um, here's a clip from Breaking Points with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson responding to that. Well, now okay. you've really set people off on, on that one. But I wanted to ask if you had any reaction to the uh, UFO whistleblower. He actually came out uh, just a couple of days ago, and he said, um, of you actually, he said, uh, you have a PhD in physics. Where is your curiosity? I have credentials. I would be happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. If he wants to debate me, I would be fine with that. So first, just any reaction, or if you have any interest in uh, debating the UFO we'd whistleblower. Be, we'd be happy to host. Which we would there. host, of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I don't, I don't, you've never seen me in a debate on anything. It, okay. Debating is not the path to objective truth. The mm. path to objective truth is data, all right? Mm. So when two scientists get into a, quote, debate, there's an implicit contract between the two. Either I'm right and you're wrong, either you're right and I'm wrong, or we're both wrong. Mm -hmm. In a rare case, we can both be right, but it's very rare, and it's another... Like, I, we can be blind and touching an elephant. And I can, well, elephants are these hard, you know, ivory things. And you say, no, elephants are these stringy things, and you're touching the tail on... T we're both right, right? Because we're, ta yep. we're talking about right. the same object. But in most cases, that's not the case. All right, so um, what happens to the, when the two scientists... They'll have the conversation, and at some point, they'll say, okay, we can't agree... We need more data mm -hmm. to resolve this. Now let's go have a beer. Mm -hmm. So it is not, it makes no point to debate someone who's talking about classified information that nobody else can see. I Good can't point. have, I can't, that's not, so what needs to happen is it needs to release the information. Yes. To, we did that in the Apollo era. We got moon rocks, brought it back, shared the rocks with the world. So everybody can investigate it and evaluate it. So if you have a result, the way science uh, arrives at objective truth is not by debate, which, which politicians like doing. And by the way, I've never seen a debate ever where one person says, you know, you convinced me, I agree. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> never happened happens ever. on this show sometimes. Yeah, happens we, sometimes here. We try to a little bit of that so, here. So, so <laughs> my quick point is that yeah. um, all he has to do is release release it for independent analysis. And in science, an objective truth is established by multiple verifications of a claim. Hmm. And eyewitness testimony, sworn testimony, is irrelevant to science. Mm -hmm. We don't care what you saw or what you say you saw. We care a little bit. Or we'll make a note of it. But in the end, if I want to if I want to declare that what you said you saw, what you did see, is objectively true, other people have to verify it. Yes. Here's the thing. I actually don't disagree with Neil on this. I think he's actually right, and I think he's got a point. 
I think people got so caught up in the flame war between uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and David Grush and uh, going back and forth with the UFO community. Neil deGrasse Tyson is not wrong. He is not a dumb man. He is obviously an intelligent person. He's director of the Hayden Planetarium. He's the host of Cosmos. Like he clearly, he clearly knows what he's talking about, but he's also a science entertainer. Okay. He's a, he's an entertainer and it's his job to be out front in public as much as possible so that he can sell books, sell speaking gigs, uh, make appearances and just generally be out there. Right. Like that's the, that's the job of an entertainer is to be seen. So he's weighing in on this debate, on this, this process that's unfolding right now, and all he's saying, and I, I've gone back and looked at clips that he's done from months ago and from as far back as two, three years ago, he's been very consistent across the entire spectrum the whole time. And he's just said, show me something. And to be fair, isn't that what we're all saying too? I mean, aren't we all saying the same thing? I think the UFO community can be kind of like evenly divided into two camps. There's a camp of believers. I count myself among that camp. We just generally believe. I have a sense in my gut that this is all very real and it's true. And I act and, and behave in a way that is in alignment with that belief. Others like Neil are simply saying, I'm open to this idea. I would love for aliens to be real but I need to see something before I'm going to change my entire worldview. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that uh, frame of mind. And I think that it's what we're all trying to get to. That's the whole point of disclosure, right? That's the whole point of, I'm going to beat this horse again, the Schumer Amendment. That's why there was subpoena power and eminent domain clauses put into that in the first place. The whole point was to go kick the doors down, go into these facilities and get our hands on some actual, real, tangible evidence that we could put out to the larger scientific community and get more brains on this. That's the problem right now. We have outstanding testimony from highly credentialed, well-respected people. And that testimony would be enough to convict somebody in a court of law, but it's not enough to convince the overall scientific community of the reality of what we all know is going on. So we've got to cross that Rubicon at some point. And that is what is going on right now, right? That's what, that's why there's so much anticipation about what's coming next. We want to see more whistleblowers. We want to see them actually leak some stuff. We want to see some evidence. We need to see a craft. We need to see some meta materials or something that we could touch. Gary Nolan supposedly has some of this material and has information that the rest of us don't have, but we still haven't really seen it. So until we do, Neil's got a point. I want to know what you think, though. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Is Neil right? Is he wrong? Are you Team Nolan? Team Neil? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being a part of Team Night Shift. And hey, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost a dime and it really helps me out. Thanks for being here. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep looking up.